I can't say I knew too much about Avicii before he passed away in April of 2018. Sure, I knew of his hits on the Billboard charts during EDM's popularity in the first half of the 2010s, but it was only after his passing that I did a deep dive into the person of Tim Bergling. And after watching the documentary Avicii True Stories, I immediately understood what part of his burden came to be. See, there's a scene in the documentary in which Tim talks about having a breakthrough and realizing that he is an introvert after reading Carl Jung's theories on personality. In his book Psychological Types, Jung contended that extroverts channel their energy toward other people and gain energy from doing so. On the other hand, introverts channel their energy inwards through reflective and introspective activities as their energy is depleted through socializing, without meaning that they too cannot hold meaningful relationships with others. About this, Tim reflected, According to this, I'm an introvert and I prefer intuition to sensation. For example, I struggle a lot with small talk. I'm pretty good at it, but I don't enjoy it at all. I get nothing out of it. Extroverts get more out of socializing. They can mingle at parties or whatever. I always have deep talks with people, so small talk is something I have to suffer through rather than something I enjoy. I've always felt judged for not being an extrovert. I felt like being an introvert is inferior. And just reading about it today, I mean, I've read a lot of different things over the last six months, but this was incredible. In addition to his introversion, it seems like Tim also had social anxiety or shyness, according to people who knew him. And this anxiety or shyness or even sensitivity is not really the same as introversion. So it seemed like the difficulty he had in living the lifestyle of a touring musician was multi-layered and the stress and pressure this lifestyle had on him is well conveyed in the documentary. You get the idea that on one hand, the sensitivity he had as a person gave him his artistry, but at the same time, it seemed like he needed more shielding, more protection in the world of entertainment he found himself in. And I honestly think no human being is really made for this lifestyle of the touring musician. Think about it, the highs from being on stage that cannot be brought down organically each night after the show is over. The immense attention showered on one person. The unparalleled amount of pressure that you have for each performance. I mean, you are literally the foundation of a business which many people depend on. All this is enormous for one soul to take on. And going from country to country, plane to plane, hotel room to hotel room, always surrounded by people. You can see how this can unravel someone, anyone. Also, the fan bases of musicians are quite different from those of other kinds of celebrities, say actors. I think actors can have a better time shielding themselves from the rest of the world. It's almost like they can kind of hide behind their roles. They don't really need to have as direct a line of communication with their fans all the time as musicians are expected to have with the public. Musicians can't really live in that actor's bubble. Although I think this is starting to change as more people, including famous people, spend more time on social media. And sure, some musicians out there are extroverts and are by no means shy, but even for them, this is a tall order. Imagine people who have a more sensitive nervous system, a greater need for time alone to recover. What it's like for them. It's literally like going against every fiber of your body every night, having to do 250 shows a year. You know, because uh, I was getting skinny, I was getting every, everything, you know. I needed a break just to be home. Um, but now I feel, yeah, like I said, even if, if, if I look back to me before I started touring, you know, I, I feel better now. I think when we're young, we have this idea that you can bend your personality into what you want it to be or what the circumstances or popular culture want it to be. But as we get older, we realize that there are some things that are set in stone when it comes to personality, to who we are. And instead of going against these things, we learn much later that to achieve any sense of well-being, we have to nurture these aspects of self. I'm not claiming to know what led to Tim's suicide by any means. It is impossible to know the exact mindset of another person at any time, and his introverted nature is all but one piece of who he was. But it seemed like Tim did reach that place in embracing his true self after he retired from the road and decided to focus on music production in the studio in 2016. So, ultimately, in addition to his musical talent and the unforgettable memories he offered the world, I think Tim is also a testament of the importance of stripping all the layers until you have a better understanding of your real self. Doing away with everything that does not serve that newfound empathy and perception of self 
in making the conscious decision to do the most you can for that very person.